I'm going to fire another arrow at that uh, golem up there on the platform. Okay. So let's do it. That would be plus my dex. Oh, nice. I'm stunned. Oh! Oh. Can you, <laughs> you can't do a skirmish with range weapons? I, can I? Uh... I'm sure you can do a mighty blow. Yeah, I could another do another thing. I could do a, or I could do a lethal blow. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna do a lethal blow. You can move yourself or the target of your attack two yards oh. in any direction. I'm with gonna do a that. Oh. Can I do, uh, can I do that? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do that. Move it anywhere in any direction. Yep. All right, so that'll be one, and then I can use four to um. I'm gonna do a dual strike. Uh, let's see. Uh, within six. Oh, it says within six yards. Of my, if I'm using. Oh, uh, that other golem is not within six yards of the other one. That will not okay. work. So maybe. Hmm. Uh, I'll also do a pierced armor, mighty blow. All right. So skirmish, pierced armor, mighty blow to that thing. All right. Do the damage first. Right. First comes the damage and the mighty blow. So the short bow, 1d6, plus that from the merchant thing, plus a 1d the mighty blow, that is another 1d6. Alright, is Blech. that the attack or the damage? That's the damage with the pierce armor on. Alright, so you gotcha. Nice. What's okay. up next? And then the skirmish which is I'm trying to push him away from me generally in this direction here. Okay. Because you are pushing him off the cliff, he is able... He's entitled to a, an acrobatics roll. Fair enough. Which isn't going to be much. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that will be enough to push him into the lava. Nice. He falls into the lava, immediately takes damage, and he he uh, tries to get up, but then he freezes in place as he sinks. No. Oh. <laughs> Golem down. Sinks into the lava, Terminator style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> without the without the thumbs up at the end. <laughs> Just. I do like a sort of a taunt, like nailed that one. Nice, nice shot, Lee. Thanks. This I, don't know why, I don't know why I don't use this thing more often. Hmm. Comes over here and starts oh. to try to punch cogs. Moves rather quickly. They didn't move that far. Plus. Uh, he tries to. He tries to. Uh, basically, lift up his hands and and um, uh, pummel Cogs down into the ground, but he manages to dodge out of the way. <laughs> Can't touch me! <laughs> uh, I believe Maximilian's up. Nice. Ah, here we go. I'm gonna jump over this lower thing. Okay. Are you going to give yourself a running start, or are you going to leap from there? I'm going to give myself a running start. Alright. No idea. What is your movement speed again? Uh, it's only 10. So 1, 2, so if you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you can make a strength check, but if you... You can make a strength check, but after that you won't be able to move any further. Okay. After you jump, after you make a jump check. Uh, when I'm right by Jody, as I as I go back, I'm just gonna tell her to uh, follow me. Okay. Keep in mind she hasn't been holding her action this turn because she was holding it before and assisted wielding. Uh, so I hope <laughs> you make this. Uh, no worries. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> So strength, it's just a normal strength test. Yeah, <laughs> jumping unless you have, yeah, just normal strength check. Here we go. Huh. Unless you have a 14. jumping focus. 14, that's going to be enough. 
<gasps> you will actually make it here. Doom. Oof. Nice. That is your move. You still have a major action, I think. Major action. Oh, there's not much I can do, I'm afraid. All right. Uh, I can do. Uh, I just gotta go and wait. A major action? Yeah, because you just did a move. Uh, Doing the running me... jump is a move. Yes. Okay, so I can make a a a charge. That is half my speed. Sure. Okay, so I'm jumping and charging. Okay. So I'm move charging your, this golem. Move your token to wherever it is you need to move. There you go. Uh, yeah. So here we go. That 18. will hit. Roll for damage. And we have... Is that six stunts? Looks like it. Six stun points. Yep. Six stun <laughs> points. What do you want to do with this? That's this is a pretty good round for you. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, he's by an edge. He's by an edge. Yeah. That's so, true. Okay. Yeah. Pierce armor, mighty blow, and skirmish. Okay. So three d six. Uh, damage plus four plus. I think you still have one more point. Two. Yeah, but I. I, don't, I, can, I can move myself as well. Ooh. Yeah, if you want to skirmish yourself, you can, if you want to. Yeah. So, here comes the damage, first of all. Armor piercing. Armor piercing? Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. Alright. <laughs> nice. And then you're trying to knock him off into the lava? Yeah. Okay. It will be entitled to a dexterity roll. Of course, that's half his armor as well. Okay. Uh, you try to push it into the lava. It, uh, unfortunately, uh, is able to maintain its stance, uh, but is it doesn't fall into the lava, but it still gets knocked off balance by the utter force of your charge, and is now prone. All right. So, still good. <sighs> Jody's next. She is going to try to make the jump. Oh, come on, don't die. Her oh, strength geez. is not that great, though. Where is she trying to jump towards? Ooh, nice. Good job, Jody. Yeah, she made the jump. Yay! She will land here. Nice. That is her action. Um, so that is her minor action, and as her major action, she is going to cast a spell. Let me make sure I got the target number this time. Yeah, that's fine. Um, she casts Force Cage on the golem. Uh, the golem uh, is prone, and you see this, uh, you start to see this um, shimmering coalescing around it as the, it looks like um, the entire golem is being squeezed tightly. Uh, flecks of rock starts to crumble uh, from its outer surface, its skin, uh, and it takes... All right, does maximum damage. Jody's doing well with the damage. Okay. Oh. It's in a Seems force case. Seeming more and more like a like a suitable romance there, Max. Saying out of character, totally not actually being done right now. <laughs> well, we have such good combat synergy, Jody <laughs> and me, uh, Maximilian cells. Only natural. Yeah. <laughs> Cogs takes out his hammer and he strikes the golem. Yay, plus two for prone. Plus two for pl prone. Very good, yes. Yep, that'll hit. Dealing. Mm -hmm. 
as you can imagine, his his hammer has his his hammer has a good amount of enha of enchantments on it. Oh. Thirteen points of damage. Uh, nine of which is elemental. <laughs> nice. Uh, as he hits the golem, you see electric sparks, you see flames, and you see ice all in that one hit. Wow. Freaking try beam attack. Yes, basically. Right. I'm going to see if I can move on ahead to try and see if I can spot any thing, any one, anything that could help. Okay. I'm going... Roll a to... perception, I guess? Well, yeah, I guess I'll roll a perception check first. Here's that. Well, are you moving before you're, are you moving before you're searching? Yeah, I was going to move before I search. Go, move first, then, and then roll your check. So one, two, three, four, five or six. What is your speed? My speed was... Uh, 13. So I think that's 6. Yeah, that's 6. One, two, three, six and a half, four. roughly. Yes. 6. Okay. Alright, then I'm gonna roll the perception check. Yes. It looks clear to you. Okay. The, the... Is any more of the map revealed to us? Yeah. Um... The map continues... This way. And pretty much, uh, as far as the eye can see, it's clear. You can okay. moving forward. Yes. Uh, you still have a major action left. Now with heck, let's shoot at it again. Okay. Again, I'm, I'm feeling good about this stuff now. Do range attacks get plus two as well when fighting prone characters? Yeah, yeah oh, I think so. To, yeah. the, to, the, to the damage or the attack roll? Actually, I think they have defense against range. I think it's harder to hit someone who's prone. Because yeah. if you okay. if you like drop, if you drop, it's harder to hit them. Fair so enough. So it's a minus two to this roll. Okay, so that's a twelve. That's twelve. That'll still hit. That's good. Okay. Roll for and damage. That's a stunt. Again, I'm getting stunts. That's three. Yep, that'll still hit. Um. I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna try and break logic and think that I can. I can skirmish him into here. There's no way I should be. Able, there's no way I could do that. Okay. Um. Actually, I have an idea. Would it be possible to have an arrow stick in it? Uh, would it be possible to do what? I'm sorry. To have an arrow become fired into it, but then lodge inside the golem. Ah. Uh... If you can get penetrate trait through its armor, because I'd like to do that, I'd like to do pierce armor. Sure. Combine. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm look at that. Yeah. So I'm use a pierce armor, and I don't have anything else to use on the other SP point. Okay. Actually, wait a minute. Freaking. Okay, I'm remembering this now. Dave, I'll tell you this earlier. My uh, rogue thing lets me have pierce armor only cost one SP. Yep. Oh, that's good. This whole cool. time I've been forgetting about that. Nice. I'll, I'll also do a, um, um, it's already knocked down, so I'll, then I'll just do a mighty blow with it. So pierce armor, okay. mighty blow. Okay. And I'm aiming to try and get that thing to stick, to lodge itself within it. Well, that plus one is actually nothing. Uh, oh, wait, no, I, I'm I sorry. Know. Wait, 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 what are you going to say? Uh, unfortunately, that will, oh. That's a hit. that's the damage, right? That's, that's the damage. That's the damage. Okay. I also just realized I forgot to add something before I fired that. Something what, very important. What did you need to add with it? I was going to take some of my rope and tie it to the end of the rope, the other end. I'm not sure if you would have time if you have enough actions for that. As an interaction, probably not. Yeah, I don't think you have enough. I'll just okay. I'll forego the cool visible stunt I was totally having an idea for for now. Okay. It was next gonna time. be glorious. Next time. We'll keep that in mind for next time. But yeah, I'll attack him for that much damage then. With and you armor. said it's pierce armor, so it's half. So it's half. half. Okay. So. Okay, it's looking 
You you look like you can sneeze at it and it'll it'll die. <laughs> um, the golem attempts to get free of the grasp of the horse cage, so I roll a constitution. Ten plus your magic plus focus. Okay, that's not going to be enough. So it's still within its all right force cage. Max, you're up. Well then, I'm gonna sneeze at the sneeze at this thing. <laughs> Hachu! Uh, uh, aim action attack, bam, sixteen. That will hit. Nice. Roll for damage. Let's do it. Oh no, no dragon die. Oh no, no stunt. Oh, no that's stunt. a Aww. that's rare for you to not have stunt. <laughs> uh, plus four plus two, bam, thirteen. Two okay. which penetrates armor. Maximilian, give us a cinematic of how you slay this golem. I'm gonna uh, cut low uh, towards. Oh, he's already prone, right? He's a he's prone and in a force cage. Yes. Okay, so I'm guessing this force cage doesn't stop me. So. Nope. I'm gonna uh, do the classic jump, slow motion. Oh. Uh, sound and. Bam. Bam. Straight nice. down to the chest. You, yes, you dig your sword down his chest. It penetrates right through its tough armor. The um, the golem opens its mouth wide as uh, lyrium essence leaves from its mouth. Its stomach bursts. Uh, rocks are flying all over the place uh, as it starts to crumble away, Dang. and and then when it's when the crumbling has ended, it disintegrates and disappears. Ah, just like <laughs> Dominique did. I stand up in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Jody. Uh, Jody um, immediately reaches up to you. Uh, she places her hand on your shoulder and she says, Are you alright? Uh, thank you f for your concern. I'm, I'm doing alright. Well done, she says. That was incredible. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank, thank you very, very much. Uh, perhaps we sh we uh, perhaps we should get going. Uh, and it turns L bright red. That sounds like a good idea. Um, I think the exit is this way. All right, you guys will move towards the exit, and as you are rushing your way through, the scene around you disappears, and you're back oh. in the fade. Ooh. You're back in the fade. Um. <laughs> Jody says, we should continue trying to find the rest of our companions. Would this give me, go ahead. Would this give me a moment to take like a rest action to get some health points back? Yes. Now you guys are resting and you have time to you have time to RP, to talk to, to, talk to people if you'd like. It's 1d6. Is it 1d6 plus constitution? Yes, 1d6 plus constitution, I believe, is a rest. Well, let me just double check. Okay. Let me double check. Um, you can take a breather, which is... F I'm sorry. It's five plus your constitution plus your level. Five plus, plus your level. constitution plus your level. Okay, so yeah, forget that roller. That would be two plus three plus... Yeah, so I'll get, I'll get ten points back. Yes. I don't know if Maximilian got hurt at all. Nope. <laughs> <Pretty> nice. <laughs> like a true tank. Yep. So... All right, so go ahead. You guys are wandering through the fade trying to find your other companions. So, Lee, this is Jody. Jody, this is my good friend Lee. Hello. Pleased to meet you, Lee, uh, Jody says. So, you are a friend of Gwinnale's as well? Yes. Uh, yes, we uh, met, well, how many weeks ago now? I can hardly remember. Time is a blur. 
the I think time... it's been about a it's been roughly a week, give or take, maybe a little bit more yeah. than a week. I've lost track. Forgive me, but with our current situation, I've seemed to time doesn't really work well with me trying to keep track of that nowadays. That's true. Do you know what happened to us, Jody? Because I have one very interesting interesting story to tell. <laughs> uh, she says, I know a little bit, at least as much as Nathan knows. We know that you all have been traveling. Um, we know that something something happened, something changed, and we were sent to help you fix things. You, you know about this? I'm, I'm surprised. No, not that I wouldn't think that you would know, but, but why, how, how did you know? She, she says, Nathan, uh, Nathan was able to find out. That's amazing. Finally, someone who doesn't think we're insane. She says, I probably should explain. Do you know what a dreamwalker is? A dreamwalker? No. Lee, you? Uh, I can kind of guess what it would mean, but I'm never really expert on it. Uh, Jody explains, well... Do you know that magic is essentially, uh, the source of magic is from the Fade itself. Mages have the ability to weave the Fade essence to create the powerful abilities of magic. Some individuals have a different connection to the Fade. You know the stories that they say about how when you dream you're actually traveling to the Fade? Yes. Dreamwalkers are able to control this. They are actually able to walk and maneuver around the Fade in their dreams. Sometimes they are might even be able to communicate with people through dreams. Lucid dreamers? Dreamwalkers, she says. Uh. They are very, very rare in this world. Nathan is one of them. Hmm. So it was Nathan who found us. She nods. You said you your name. You said your name is Maximilian. Yes, now Maximilian I, Sunworth. Now I remember. She says Nathan said that he was getting in contact with someone named Maximilian, on behalf of. Uh, on behalf of, his mother. What? So that's what that was. Hmm. You mean that he contacted my mother? Not exactly, she says. Oh, this Na is... Nathan, um, Nathan only just recently has been able to channel his powers such that he's able to form images in dreams and send them to other people. Oh, so he used my mother's image to tell me things? He figured that would be the least threatening way. Well, I guess he got the job done at least. Still, he, he didn't mean to deceive you, but he figured you would be less threatened if he formed the image in that, if he formed the message that way. Then it means that he knows that something changed. Yes, she says. Oh, this is all starting to make sense now, Lee. Look, hmm? I told you before that something changed when we transported in time, right? Yes. And now, seems like I wasn't one the one who knew about this. It was this Nathan person. If we get to meet up with him, maybe he has got all kinds of answers for us. That would definitely be a help right now. We only know so much. Though Nathan's arc 
its contacts have been very vague. Well, if it's possible for us, well, first of all, if it's possible for us to perhaps meet up with our meet up with the rest of our group here in the Fade. You said you were sent to help us. Yes. Well, well, I guess we could use all the allies we can get. Yeah. Um, Cogs has been quiet this, this entire time, and he's been he's been um, thinking. He's been he's been in deep thought as you guys are wandering. Uh, mm. He looks a little troubled. So, Cox, what do you think about all this? Hmm? Oh, sorry, I, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, oh, I see. Wait, did you... I had some really th weird things happening to me while I was in the Fade. Did you guys experience things as well? Uh, yes. Cog says with a frown. Yes. I appreciate. Um, that's when, that's when uh, Jody says. That scene that you saw in the Mage Tower, when you intervened. I uh, wish I could say, that that was exactly how it happened. Uh, that that's exactly how it had happened, but you know that that's not true. I'm. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. Is that Nathan's doing as well? I said, I'm sorry, what was the question? I was asking if, because the whole Nathan and the whole Fade Walk and all that was our visions, was our was our visions and things the, the, the results of Nathan's doing as well? I don't know, she says. If all of us were uh, under the influence, I don't think it, if all of us was under the influence, I don't think it would be Nathan. He doesn't have the power, I don't think at least, to be able to send images to multiple people at once. Even right. if he could, I don't know why he would have done that. Hmm. I think Wayne... Uh, 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 Gwenael said that demons could mess with your mind. At least that's what I've been going on all this it's, time. It's Aldred, she says. Aldred's the one that's been manipulating our minds. He's the one who uh, put us in the Fade in the first place while we were waiting for you at the tower. Well then, Aldred, I think... Uh, out of character, did mm -hmm. Delwyn say this name to us? I don't think Delwyn ever gave the name. No, oh, not that I'm aware of. She's he said that he got a name, but he never mm -hmm. actually ended up saying it to anyone, as far as I remember. So, if we kill this Aldred, then uh, we would be free. Yes. Uh, hopefully, he hasn't gotten to. Hopefully, Aldred hasn't gotten to Nathan. If a demon gets in possession of... Uh, dreamwalkers are always in constant... have to be in constant vigilance against demons. Because if they manage to get a hold and control dreamwalkers, the results can be very dire, if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. The ability for demons to not only walk amongst the Fade, but in real life as well. I... I read something about this. I don't know if it's it's similar, but I read about blood magic and how demons were used in that as well. I'm guessing dreamwalking is not blood magic? No, she says. Oh. It's very different. I'm relieved to hear it. Dreamwalkers have the ability to instill ideas into people's heads based uh, via dreams. But they cannot outright control anyone directly. <laughs> wow, I don't know about you, Lee, but I'm getting a headache. Yeah. I'm used to fighting people with steel, not this. <laughs> <sighs> this well, I'm, yeah. I'm very happy I found you, Jody. 
I'm very happy you found me too. I would well. probably still be stuck there reliving she trails off what actually happened during that during that time. Well, you're here now. And uh, we're going to get some payback on this person, this Aldred. Gwenil, you have uh, been fleeing from the Templar with Nathan. And at this point, Nathan has transformed before your eyes. Um, he has become older. Uh, this has been the middle of combat, by the way. Similar to, to what happened with Jody when she was getting into combat against Dominique with Maximilian. So Nathan has matured uh, more than 22 years because the last time you saw him was, uh, was back when you were still living at home. So he definitely has aged quite a bit, but he still looks good. Um, he now, however, is in full armor. And together you manage to uh, you manage to uh, escape away from the Templar. Uh, during combat, you realize that Nathan has acquired the uh, Arcane Warrior special edition. Um, as, as soon I've seen this before. <laughs> and another elf. Perhaps. You... Yeah. If you remember my backstory, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen that I came away before my mentor. You... Um, when you when you manage to escape the uh, surrounding illusion around you disappears and you find yourself in the the fade. Well, or well, you always were in the fade, but now you're sort of in blatantly in the fade. Yeah, everything around you is kind of swirly. Nothing around you really all makes that much sense. It's very dreamlike, but you're oh, you're very aware. Uh, Nathan still has his sword out, and he's um, scanning the area, making sure that there are no more threats. My character uh, says in Elysian, I'm, not sh I'm pretty sure Nathan probably speaks Elysian, and he's like, oh, yes. I thought so. So, he... Uh, as he looks around. <laughs> he turns to you, and he responds back in Orlesian, you thought what? The fate. I think it's how we were into fate. Yes, he says. You need to go find the rest of your friends. Jody's here too, by the way. She'll be glad to see you. She is? He nods. I figured you might you might uh, be happy to hear that, he says. Uh... She speaks very highly of you. She was very excited um, to find out that you were involved in all of this. Yes, well, considering the last time I had seen her, is anything would probably be better. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, out of character, you said what would have been better? I said, I said, considering the last time, the situation, the last time we saw that we saw each other, that anything would um, be better. So I'm sure she is. That's pretty much what he was saying. Just thinking back about it being um, the tranquil eyes, tranquilized, <laughs> tranquilized. Um. But there, at this point, uh, Nathan, um, when it looks like he's satisfied with uh, the safety of the surroundings, he shuts his eyes for a moment, and you sense him channeling. Mm. Um, after a few seconds, he abruptly opens his eyes. He points his sword in a specific direction. And he says, that way. And you guys journey. Um, as you guys are making your way through the Fade, uh, nothing is currently threatening you. If you wish to talk, interact with Nathan, you may do so. 
if you want to. All right. <clears throat> uh, so I had a question, a character, quickly. It's been a bit. Um, so I saw all those ter. I saw, um, like all that stuff that leading up to him getting to the school and whatnot. Yeah. And you probably have a lot of questions. Probably. Yes, I do. All right. So what kind of mood do I sense from since I just got that spirit talent? Um, he seems to be um, worried, cautious, determined, all three. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's see here. Um, my character just pipes up, whatever is going on here? which perhaps you'll have some answers. I'm sure we'll get through this together. He, um, he smiles. Sorry, it's, it's weird seeing you at such a young age. You <laughs> should be a lot older by now, but he sort of sighs. Yeah. He, he kind of starts, he, he says, um, he, he sort of blushes a little bit. Um, and he says, you still look good, though. And he sort of blushes. So do you. He, um, he, he, get, he grows redder. I guess what you're sensing from him is awkward embarrassment. Because <laughs> this is a guy that clearly cared about you um, mm -hmm. more than just friends. And now... You're like not jailbait, but you know what I'm. You know what I'm saying. It's awkward <laughs> in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> I used my character is uh, like 19, almost going on 20 or something like that. So yeah, and he's probably in. Well, he's he was younger than you. I I, I want to say that he was younger than you when you. Yeah, actually, him. I did think I said he was um, probably a year or mature two. Mature for his age when. Yeah, it was like a year or two. He was younger. Yeah. Than everyone, so yeah. So uh, he says, "I'm not used to you. I'm not used to uh, you being the younger one." He says, "I think I've <laughs> overshot you by a few years." He says, "You're having this conversation completely in, or in Orlesian, by the way." Yeah. And it has been good years for you, though. I've been busy, he says. Um. I've been waiting for a very long time. Waiting? Yeah, he says. When I found out that you disappeared, I went looking for you. Eventually, I got a tip. And for some reason, I had to wait many years before you would show up again. But finally, the time has come, and Jody and I decided to decided to meet up with you here. Unfortunately, the, um, the demon who trapped us in the Fade uh, got the upper hand. Hence why we're all here now. <clears throat> I, I see. When you say tip, uh, what do you mean? Somebody's been uh, helping Jody and I, uh, a woman, Morrigan is what she calls herself. Morgan, that's a nice name. He nods. She's the one who told us that you, she's the one who has been telling us what's going on about you all traveling to the future. Why would she know such things? Who is this Morgan? Do you know anything else other than her name? She wouldn't say. That woman, she's very cryptic, very mysterious. She won't always answer me with a straight answer. Is she a mage? I believe so, yes. She must be an extremely powerful one if she was able to... Um, if she was able to sense a change in the timeline. Somehow yes. she, somehow, she, 
uh, somehow whatever happened didn't affect her. She says from where she is, uh, the rules of the rules of time doesn't reach her. Hmm. Hmm. Out of character, do you remember the last time you saw Morgan, what she did? Yep. She went through a mirror. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> uh, so... I don't know how to really bring this up, so I'm not going to... I'm just going to ask... I think I had ended up in your vision vision that you were having in the fate and the fate. I was in your memories. I don't know what to do. Yeah. He I he looks down towards the ground as you're talking. I bring my pace up a little bit more and sweat that and put in my and you know, slowly puts his hand on his shoulder. I wish I could have helped all of that trouble. I'm I am sorry. Those visions, by the way, Nathan said. You know how you felt did you ever feel while you were in the in the ma the circle of Magi? Did you ever feel like somebody was watching over you? Somebody was guiding you? I think you even gave that being a name. Aiden, yes. Do you know what a Samyari is? Samyari is... Gwenea. Should I make a roll and Go see ahead. if I know what that is? Go ahead and make a roll. It's a magic or arcane lore, whichever is higher for you. Um, both really high, so... <laughs> Pick one. Yes, you've heard of Samyari. Uh, they are an extremely rare, very, very few people um, become Samyari. Um, even fewer end up living to grow past a certain age because <laughs> of their connection with the Fade. They are very susceptible to turning into abominations, which is why many of them don't live past a very young age because they get corrupted so easily and so quickly. Um, but those who do manage to somehow survive the pull of fate, they are um, just like uh, they are known as dreamers. I uh, have to have, by the way, David, I have to change what I had Jody tell you. She, she didn't call Gwenael, I'm sorry, she didn't call um, Nathan, a dream walker, because the actual term is just simply dreamer in the Dragon Age lore. Okay. So he's just a dreamer. And um, dreamer has the, has the ability to traverse through the Fade in ways that most people can't. Um, and some of them are even, like Nathan, apparently is able to manipulate dreams. Sometimes they can be, even can send dreams while you're awake as well, as visions. Um, Nathan will explain to you, I realized that I had this gift. Not only was I a mage, but I had special abilities that very few people even knew about or even could explain. I thought, and I was so scared, he says, I thought about you during the really lonely times, and sometimes that ended up projecting myself towards you and your thoughts. Uh, I... Aiden, he says, that was me, in him. Grinnell just kind of stops and is like... <laughs> Stunned silence. I yep. didn't realize at first 
what was happening when it would never had happened. He just and actually before he cuts him off and just kind of runs up and hugs him. He he um stops short when you hug him and then he sort of he returns it back and clutches you. Uh, tears start streaming down his eyes, and he says, "I'm sorry." He says, "Whenever I had connected to you, I was I was too young. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you who I really was. I couldn't only communicate with you in, in in visions and feelings. But we had this connection. I could feel it. And then when you disappeared, I tried looking for you. I tried searching for you." via the fade and you were nowhere to be found that's when morrigan found me and she told me what had happened and she told me that i wouldn't be able to see you again for another 20 years or so i wouldn't so i waited and you waited for me I always waited for you, Glenel, he said. Again, he blushes again. He, he blushes again. Aww. My character starts to tear a little bit and then goes... When I arrived at the Circle of Magi... Brushing away tears. <laughs> when I arrived at the Circle of Magi, he said, Dominique told me that you had died. And... I didn't want to believe him. That was when I kept trying to make a connection with you again. I was trying to, like I said, I was trying to find you. I was trying to form another connection, and I couldn't find you. So, for a while, I didn't want to admit it, but I, I thought that you were dead. It wasn't until Morrigan contacted me that she told me that you were very much alive. I just couldn't sense you anymore because you were, you were not in this time frame. It wasn't until a few days ago, several days ago, did I sense that you were here. I was able to visit you in your dreams, but I didn't want to scare you. It, it had been so long. So I've been trying to guide you all this time. I knew that you were trying to find the scroll. I knew that you were trying to find a way to translate it. That's why I sent that image of the Dalish clan to you. Oh, stop for a second and whatnot, and finishes wiping away tears and wipes head forehead around his face so and whatnot, and just like clearing eyes, like thinking. It's a lot. Uh, actually, that's when Nathan says he sighs, says, "Sorry, I know this is a lot, and I know that." We have more pressing matters, but he wipes his he wipes his eyes. I've had uh, twenty years, twenty two years to figure out what exactly I was going to say to you the next time I saw you. It's a little bit um, more challenging than I had thought. We can practice these things in our head a billion times. And sometimes they never, and um, most of the time they never come out as we would wish. It's just best to speak. Is something I've been learning very, very quickly, often lately. Uh, he doesn't. Res he nods, but he doesn't respond. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say, or, or ask? So. So did it become, I'm curious, why did you wait so long to come in contact with me again after the harrowing, after I went, I mean, I was in contact with you since the I first went to the tower uh, when, I w when I was 13, but uh, after I went to the harrowing, I stopped hearing from Aiden, uh, uh, you. So, so I'm sorry, your question was, why didn't he try to contact you after? Uh, yeah, because he because uh, he disappeared. Uh, he stopped hearing from Aiden after some time during his harrowing. Remember, it had been like yeah, a couple, and it had been like a so year and a half since. Frame after the harrowing and before you went zipping through time. Yeah, and zipping through time. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, you are okay. He <clears throat> he tells you I was still coming to terms with, with my abilities and for a while I got I got scared. I it was at that point that I learned what I really was. And I was ashamed. Some Yari aren't some Yari can become extremely dangerous people. And I was afraid that if I ended up going down a very dark path that I would bring you with me. I was afraid that if I kept practicing, if I kept using my powers, it would send me so deep that I might become an abomination. So you said you were scared. That comes to a bit of shock to me, but I guess it could happen to anyone. But you shouldn't feel bad about it. Uh, he says, yeah, you're right. Because, you know, we'll fix it. We'll fix everything. You're damn right we will. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Delwyn... You and Plim managed to uh, escape from the werewolves. Mm -hmm. You fought them off. Uh, Plim, fortunately, is not helpless in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And uh, once you were able to get past that that uh, entertainment, uh, the illusion disappears, and you are in the 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 fade the fade like fade not the illusion fade mm -hmm. um Plim looks around and sniffs the air uh, I hate this he says your senses never work when you're in a dream they never work properly well we need a sense of direction because otherwise we're just gonna be wandering aimlessly <sighs> Got any ideas? He says, between you and I, I think I'm the, I think you're the smart one. I just do the heavy lifting. Fair point. Especially when I'm picking up the ladies. Oh yeah. He says. Oh yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, would it be possible to make a magic roll? to sense another mage in the fade. Yes. Yes. Okay. Would any particular specialization I would figure spirit? Yes, absolutely, okay. if you have that. I do not. That's fine. That's my speciality. <laughs> uh entropy. Okay. Love the sound effect. <laughs> you you faintly feel what you believe to be another mage in, uh, we'll call it the southwest direction. We'll call it that. He sits there with his arms folded a bit. Points in the direction. I have like a... That way. Sounds good to me, Plim says, and you'll travel in that direction. While you're traveling, Plim... He he appears to be a little troubled. Um, he did crack that joke, but he cracked the joke in a rather you know defense how defense mechanism. Yeah, it's like yeah. when they're actually upset about something, they'll crack a joke as a way of trying to shake it off as much as possible. But something definitely has been bothering him. I don't um, think that we know anything about that type of defense mechanism. No. <laughs> and. Uh, he, he looks in your direction, then he looks back towards the road, then he looks in your direction, and then he finally goes. <sighs> so, how much did you see exactly? Well, all of it. 
Let's be honest, all of it. He uh, looks down towards the ground. Do you see me as a monster? Mm, not really. He turns to you. Uh, he turn. He glances over to you and then looks uh, towards the looks frontward again and says, "I shouldn't have done what I did. It was stupid. It was irresponsible." And it's also something I think any living, breathing human or elf would have done. <laughs> Hell, I would have done it. Still doesn't make it right. No, doesn't make it right, but it doesn't mean that you're a monster. I tried to put that behind me, he said. But, uh, this make a forsaken place had to remind me again. Yeah. Do you think... Do you think Max... What do you think he would think? He asks you. Honestly, no. Uh, well, that's tough to say. We all got secrets. So, yeah. I have no idea. But I think there'd be some exception in your case. Cuz you don't you don't throw away that many years of friendship over one incident. Do you think I should even say anything to him in the first place? That's entirely up to you. I'm not going to say anything. Not my place to. <laughs> I used to tell him everything. Every last detail. Especially with the women I'm with. And he hated it. I can see why. <laughs> of course, I was doing it just to give him a hard time. But, um... Sometimes a lot of it is because I wanted him to know what it's like, you know? Because he seems to have, uh, seems to have given up on that. And, mm. uh, normally I also, I just try to do it so that he can maybe want to go after it too. Pretty selfless reason. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly... Maybe I would have kept out the, the minute details, but... Oh. I'm a lot of things, but I would not call myself selfless, he says. I wouldn't even call myself that great of a friend with as much of a hard time that I put uh, Maxi through, you know? Well, see, I don't think it's so much what you do that matters. I think it's the intent behind it. Thank you, he says. And when he says thank you, he, if you, if you notice, he no longer has that raspy voice. Mm -hmm. He sounds a lot more like the Plim, the voice of Plim that you heard when you saw him still human. Renail and Nathan. You finally arrive um, at a cliff, sort of like a, a valley, I guess, at the top of a <laughs> valley-looking thing. And down below, you see Maximilian and Jody walking down at the bottom of the, at the middle, at, in the valley area. Huh. Nathan smiles. Well, well, I thought uh, it, I'm like looking around on the map to see where that would be at and stuff like that. And as I remembered, you actually you know, they were with uh, Lilden and Cogs, weren't they? I'm sorry. 
I said um, I was looking around the map. I'm sorry. Yes, Lielden and Cogs are with them as well. Sorry, I forgot uh, right. about that. <laughs> we are <coming laughs> forget the little guy and the tall guy. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. All four of them are there and they're traveling through the thing. Hello. Uh, huh. Nathan, Nathan, um, Nathan grabs her hand. Come on, and he they rush down the mountain. They rush. It's not that tall of a mountain. Um, the other four, you guys. Is this, a, I've, is this mountain like as terrible as the picture looks where they're at? Like all lava y or something? Or no, no, like no, a no, nice no. Mountain? Because I imagine, imagine like a nice cliffside or something. So I, I would, I would call it more of a very really tall hill, not really a mountain, mountain. Mm. You know, it'll take it'll so, it'll take like thirty seconds for you to get down it. So it's kind of a nice grassland hill or something. It's not grass. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's the fade. It's not really grass. Okay, I'm thrown off by the pictures for the. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. It's. <laughs> I mean, you're in some. I mean, you you know what the fade looks like, and just think of it as patches of, uh, like dirt, patches of dirt, and it's a wastelandy. It's a wastelandy looking kind of place. Fallout oh, 3. Like Fallout. Fallout 3. Yes. <laughs> it was going to the exact same place. Fallout. Okay. It looks like Fallout, but with like a hazy and haziness in the sky. Um, uh, Lielden exactly. and Lielden and Maximilian, you hear the sound of something rushing down the hill. Ah, you know, I can run myself. <laughs> uh, I draw my sword. You draw your sword. What's the matter? Hold, Master. What What's the matter? Jody asks as she takes out her staff. I'm taking Someone's out coming. Sword. I actually yell ahead at that. Uh, actually, I was going to, but I got yanked him on that. Guys, it's me, Green Ale. Green Ale. Green Ale. Ah, good. Nathan and Green Ale um, finally come into view. Um. Um, and at that point, Jody says, oh, praise be the maker in or Legion. And uh, she rushes towards, she rushes towards him. Well, I was, okay, just kind of panting. I was like, Ooh. You see Jody, Gwenael, and huh? again, just like Nathan, the years have been very good to Jody. She has aged very gracefully. And she looks really stunning in her, I believe I said she had a silver mage's outfit. She looks rather mm. stunning. Um, as she rushes towards you. Oh, make his breath. Um, as you guys meet, um, Jody wraps her arms around you very tightly. Um, and once again, you smell the sweet scent of her hair, just like you did a week ago, <laughs> at least in your time frame a week ago. Nathan rushes up, uh, uh, behind behind them, and uh, gives them a gives the scene a smile. <laughs> Shoji. She uh, pulls away from you and says, "You look just like how I remembered you." She says, "Ah, uh, and I know it's been longer for you." The Zias have been very kind to you. Well, thank you, she says. As for you, she says, you still need to get some more meat in those bones, she says as she pokes you with playfully with her staff. Uh, hey, hey, it's a game with that. <clears throat> it really does feel like it was just a couple weeks ago. Uh, Nathan, uh, Jody then turns to Nathan and says, oh, thank goodness. And she comes up to him and, and wraps her arms around Nathan as well. And he returns the hug, too. So, we're all here, Jody says. Mm, no. Not, not all of us. We're missing well, one of our party. Well, there's uh, Darwin and uh, uh, Connie Plem. Ah, Plem. Plem. <laughs> <clears throat> At that point, you guys hear a howl. You look up towards the other hill, and you see Delwyn and Plim up at the top. So, well, imagine, well. One of the, 
<laughs> and stop imagining one of the like Jody or someone else that's not familiar with that we have a werewolf in a group going trouble. It's like, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> yeah, as soon as they see, uh, well, as soon as um, as they see Lim, uh, that is when uh, Nathan unsheaths his sword and um, Jody pulls out her staff again. Speak of the womanizing devils. Uh, lower your weapons. They're with us. Oh my god, Leo. Wait, who else? That was funny. That was a delayed reaction for me, but anyways. Yeah, after he says, after, but anyways, after Maxwell's, uh, Maximilian says, uh, lower your weapons, and I was like, they are ally. Trouble, but allies. Um... Delwyn and Delwyn and uh, Plim make their way down to meet you. Cogs is jumping up and down. We're brawling, brawling, brawling. We're finally together again. <laughs> yes, I'm getting awfully sick of this place. You, yeah. are you Nathan? Indeed, he says. You must be Maximilian, he says. I am. I step up towards him. Never use my mother's form again. But I'm glad you did. Yes, sir, he says to you. I look at him and say, was that confusing message to you as well, or am I the only one? It's a long story, he says. Jody okay. said uh, you were sent here to help us? Yes, uh, he says. We are here to try to help you get back home so you can fix all of this. <laughs> Which is weird for us because this reality of ours is all that we have always known. How did you, how did you know that it's not meant to be this way then? Um, Nathan says, a woman named Morrigan told us. She's a very powerful mage. What does she look like? He, uh, he says, dark hair, stunning features, dark clothing. Uh, she likes to I use the I word s- his a lot for some reason. <clears throat> I think I've seen this woman. She's been following us in the mirrors. I'm not surprised, he says. It's how she always communicates with us is through mirrors. Apparently, mm. uh, apparently, when time changed, it didn't affect her at all because she was behind, well, wherever she is within the world of mirrors. I, I don't fully understand it either, and she never really explained any of it to me. Well, this is... Uh, I'm so confused, but I think this explains a lot, and I think this information is reliable. Yes. We just need to get out. Um, and a, out of character, real quickly. Question: Do they ever? Do they not actually say that they, when she goes through the what was it, the Illuvian or whatever, and so that 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 was outside of the Fade? Because I always thought that was pretty much another connection to a weird part of the Fade or something like that. It was. The, like, yeah, I don't know that they ever form. established it. Nope. Uh, they talk. I know that there's something to do with the Fade in the Illuvian and whatnot. So. Uh, because there's a lot of weird timey wimey stuff actually that goes on with the fate as is and on that according to the campaigns and the actual expanded lore stuff. Regardless, into, so. regardless if she's in the confusing. Regardless of whether or not she's in the fade or she's not in the fade, uh, I'm assuming that she's not in the material material plane is what I'm referring to this as the material world. Mm -hmm. Um, which for me, the way I'm designing the rules of this universe, if you're not in the material world, if you're where she is, then things that happen because of the change of time doesn't affect anyone in that realm. Mm -hmm. So whatever realm she's in, wherever she is, me, the player out of character, me, the DM out of character doesn't know, but it doesn't matter. Because I don't have to. Know. Uh, <laughs> yep. You may actually, you may actually like to know this one. That there's a campaign setting, or like, a, like a, not campaign setting, um, a, a adventure module for the Dragon Age pen and paper role playing game that has a tower that was locked away in the Fade, 
and travel and then came back through the fade when a blink of an eye would seem like a blink of an eye okay. to them 20 years later exact same amount of time 20 oh, years later hmm. um so yeah this actually makes a lot of sense according to the lore at least according to the pen and papers version of one when they worked closely with bio so i'm guessing I was, this is somehow actually possible yeah i was trying to figure out how to introduce someone that somehow knew what was supposed to happen and mm -hmm. and then i was like oh wait a minute I could use this and bring Morgan to the story at the same time. Yay! Yeah, so I'm actually like, I, I think that I was just like, this is really cool. I really, I'm applause. I'm just going to say that because this actually fits forward very well. Well, thank you. And I... it's. Thank you. Um, I was trying to do my research. So, um, anyway, continue the conversation. Whatever conversation, the eight of you are together right now. So. Met this woman or something was the thing was the last thing I said. Something. So. Uh, Plim will go up to to Max and uh, he will give him a, a friendly pat on the shoulder. Still, Good to see you again, old friend. Still kicking, Max. He says, <laughs> "I didn't expect any less from you." We had a few rough spots, but nothing we couldn't handle. And I see. He says. He leans in, like, and whispers uh, to his direction. I see that you uh, made a friend, a female friend. <clears throat> well, this is Jody Plim, and I think she's out of your league. He, he says, yes. I try to stay away from the mage types. <laughs> 